Okay. In order to understand the molecular world, we need to differentiate between the molecular and ionic world. Let's go back to the ionic world. The ionic world is made up of ions, not atoms. More importantly to you guys, you can easily find them with metal, non-metal. If it begins with a metal, it's the ionic world. That's the toughest world. That's the world of Roman numerals and charges. Roman numerals and charges. Okay? What do atoms do in order to become ionic? They have to give or take electrons. They transfer electrons. They move electrons from one place to another. They transfer. They move. So somebody becomes a positive. Somebody becomes a negative. Somebody becomes a positive. Somebody becomes a negative. That is the metal, non-metal world. That is the metal, non-metal world. We're about to encounter a brand new world. One that has nothing to do with metals. One that has nothing to do with giving and taking electrons. What are molecular compounds? What's the molecular world? Two non-metals sharing electrons. Two non-metals sharing electrons. If you encounter a formula and it's a starts with a non-metal, it is a molecular compound and has brand new, brand new rules. You can't do the whole Roman numeral thing. The charges don't matter anymore. Brand new rules. Brand new rules. How do we name it? Prefixes. 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 The prefix will tell you exactly how many atoms of each you have. The hardest part here is memorizing the prefixes. It's learning to count in chemistry language. Mono is the one disease you do not want to catch. One. Dinosaurs are called dinosaurs because they all have two nosaurs. Two nosaurs. Okay, normal reptiles don't have any nosaurs, or maybe they'll have one nosaur. But dinosaurs have two nosaurs. And I just completely lied to you. Dinosaurs don't have two nosaurs, but if the word, if the prefix, if die was a prefix, it would mean two. Die, two. Die, two. No, no questions right now. Try. Just think of the little Triceratops dinosaur in uh, Land Before Time. What was her name? Sarah? Triceratops. Try. So Triceratops has three horns. Tetra. Tetra. There's a game called Tetris where you have these four-sided figures that you have to fit in order to make these layers. Okay? Famous. Famous. Fun. Penta. Pentagon is the military building that has how many sides? Five. Okay? Hex. Uh, this one's hard to remember, but there is a hex nut. Those of you who help your parents fix things, there's a hex nut. And the hex knot has six sides. Septa kind of sounds like seven if you replace the V with a P. Septa is seven. Octa, well, an octopus has how many legs? And please don't correct me. Yes, I know it has two somethings and six legs, but don't. Whatever. Nana kind of sounds like nine. And a decade is how many years? Ten. You've got to memorize that chart because if you do, this is unbelievably easy. Carbon. First of all, notice there's no prefix on carbon because there is one prefix that is usually assumed. You don't have to see it. And that is mono. So, no prefix means I have one carbon. No prefix means one carbon. Di, think 
dinosaurs and that lie that I gave you that dinosaurs had two nosaurs, which of course begs the question, what's a nosaur? Use your imagination. Two oxygens, carbon dioxide. That's easy, isn't it? Let's do another one. Dihydrogen monoxide. This is the most dangerous chemical known to man. More people die of dihydrogen monoxide inhalation than any other chemical. Okay, this one's really bad. Emma, di means how many? Hydrogen is what? Symbol. So, how many hydrogens? And ones are understood, aren't they? Now, if you're wondering, how is water? Okay, what did I say? Dihydrogen monoxide inhalation. What happens if you breathe in water? You drown. More people die of accidental drownings than accidental chemical exposure. Okay, how was that? Pretty easy? Hang in there, Sierra. Almost there. Diphosphorus pentoxide. Here, this will get your mind off of it. Di means how many? Phosphorus is how many? Is what element? Oh, that's the. Oh, this one's cruel. I am so sorry, Sierra. Don't do this one. All right, Elaine. What's phosphorus? Ooh, so P2. And penta, five, oh, five. Okay, let's skip the next one so we can get Sierra out of here. Okay, now, with these, you're going backwards. You're going to need to use a prefix. Robert, SO2. Sulfur. Okay, do you have to use mono? No. Can you use mono? Yes. Okay. Notice that we're still changing the ending of the name, IDE. Just like, you know, there were some strategies you can play in multiple worlds. Well, the changing of IDE is the same as the ionic world. But beyond that, really, there's no, <laughs> everything is different. All right. Sierra, how about this one? Arsenic. How many arsenics? Chemistry numbers, please. What's the chemistry number for two? Yes, so it's di arsenic. We change the second oxide. All right, get out of here. Sammy, how about this one? What? Oxygen? Perfect. <laughs> and this one? Malachi. Italian boy over there. Tetra. Well, it's got to end in IDE. Hydra. Tetra Hydra. Okay, so let's go back to the other one. Nitrogen trioxide. Robert, Ashburn, go. Bobby.
No prefix means. Done with this word. What does it mean? Okay. Yeah. You need to be very careful. Number one, this one here. Number two, ionic world. Do not use prefixes. Do not use prefixes. Okay? If it's a male non-metal, no prefix. And then the rest is here. Go. We've got six minutes to make a serious dent in this. Five point five. So come over here. Here we go. Five point oh, five point five. Wow. That's going to be reduced. 